What if I told you you could stock your prepper pantry, be more prepared, save some money, save time, and solve your dinner time crunch? Stay tuned to learn an easy way to accomplish all this. Hey guys, it's Jara with Wicked Prepared. Welcome back everyone. If you saw my last video, I had a list of 25 foods that can last 25 years or more in your prepper pantry. And I also talked about the importance of using and rotating all the foods you store. Just because something can sit on the shelf for 25 years doesn't mean it should sit on the shelf for 25 years. It's important to know how to use all the foods we store, not only so we can keep them rotated out, but also because food isn't going to do us any good in a crisis situation if we don't know how to cook with it. So if you're stocking dried beans, but you don't really know what to make with them or how to cook them, you need to figure that out. If you're storing whole wheat berries, but you've never ground your own flour and used it to make bread, it's time to get practicing. And if you're storing freeze dried food and you just think of it as astronaut food and you have no idea how to cook with it, then it's time to open those cans and get started. One of my favorite ways to use freeze dried food items and really what sparked my interest and love of freeze dried food years ago is meals in a jar. I always struggled with that battle between my desire to feed my family homemade, nutritious meals and my need to resort to convenience foods just to get dinner on the table when life got crazy, as we all know life can do. When I discovered meals in a jar, I realized they were the perfect solution to that dilemma, the perfect marriage of homemade and convenient. It was a way for me to put together a homemade, nutritious meal from scratch, complete with real meat, real vegetables, real dairy, prepare them ahead of time, and then get to reap the benefits down the road when I actually prepared that meal and had that dinner on the table in 15 or 20 minutes without having to dirty any more than a single pot. It's the same reason that we love freezer meals and batch cooking. Do the work once when it fits into your schedule and then reap the rewards over and over again. But unlike freezer meals and batch cooking, meals in a jar like these don't rely on the power grid, the freezer or the refrigerator, they're shelf stable for years, which also makes them perfect for your emergency preparedness plan. Make the meals in bulk, stock up a good supply, and then like everything else, rotate and replace. Grab one off the shelf on a busy night to avoid the fast food or takeout trap. The meals I'm showing you today, I came up with in honor of the massive spring pantry preparedness freeze dried food sale that's going on. If you're watching this on or before April 29th, you're in luck. I'll put an exclusive link down in the video description. Make sure you use that link and go check out all the deals because I picked from the sale items for inspiration in coming up with these recipes. And no matter when you're watching, if you text the word sale to my number right down here at the bottom of the screen, I will send you a message with whatever is currently on sale. In these meals today, I'm featuring the ground beef and the pulled pork, two very popular proteins that are both up to 40% off right now, so it's stock up time. The perfect time to make up a batch of meals to have on the shelf. I'm going to show you how to make two different meals, and stay tuned a little bit later in the video, and I'll show you a little different way that I do both of these meals for even more options. The first meal I'm making, I'm calling hamburger rice oriental. I wanted a meal that included hamburg, rice, and peas. I was searching through recipes with those ingredients, and I kept seeing copycat recipes for an old hamburger helper variety called rice oriental that's no longer made, and apparently a lot of people really miss it. So I used that as my inspiration, but I can't really call mine a copycat because I never tried that flavor of hamburger helper. So I have no idea how, how it compares. I don't know how it's supposed to taste. Let me know down in the comments if you remember the rice oriental flavor of hamburger helper and if you ever tried it. And if not, let me know your favorite variety of hamburger helper. And are there any more flavors that you can think of that aren't around anymore? What about chicken tonight? Does anybody remember chicken tonight? That's another convenience food from my childhood. I might be dating myself here, but I still think of that jingle from time to time. I feel like chicken tonight, like chicken tonight, chicken tonight. My mom never bought Hamburger Helper when I was a kid. She made everything from scratch. Not to mention that we were also vegetarians for a good little bit of time as well. I did have a brief love affair with Hamburger Helper when I was a young adult and when my kids were little and my cooking repertoire wasn't that big either, but I never tried the Rice Oriental. When I first discovered Meals in a Jar, that was actually what I compared it to. I thought this is a little bit like Hamburger Helper, but it's just so much better. 
I don't have to add fresh Hamburg or fresh milk. Everything I need is included. All I have to add is water and I can include vegetables in the jar, which are never in a box of Hamburger Helper. That was the beginning of my new love affair with meals in a jar. Let's get started and I'll show you what I came up with for my hamburger rice oriental meal. Of course, the supplies we're going to be using for all these meals are going to be the same as usual. I'm going to be using a quart size wide mouth mason jar to hold the meal. I'm going to be using a canning funnel just to get the ingredients in. And then we really just need some basic measuring cups and spoons. So for the hamburger rice oriental, the first ingredient I'm going to be using is some hamburg, of course. And like I mentioned, this is freeze dried hamburg, so it is shelf stable. I'm using a cup of the hamburg. Next, I'm going to be adding some of the seasoning ingredients, and I'm going to start with some soy sauce powder. I get this from a store called Firehouse Flavors. I love this shop. I will put their link down in the description box. Make sure you go check out all the links down there and especially check out Firehouse Flavors because they're a pretty amazing shop. This is soy sauce powder. I do keep my powders like this in um, mason jars rather than canisters or the packaging they come in because it really helps keep moisture out so that they don't clump up over time. I'm going to be using a quarter cup of the soy sauce powder and you can see that it's still so nice and powdery and I've had this open for quite a while but because I keep it in the mason jar it keeps a nice texture. So a quarter cup of soy sauce powder. Next I'm using a teaspoon of beef bouillon. Just use whatever beef bouillon you like. This one isn't necessarily my favorite but it's the one that's been open longest and so I need to use it up. We don't mind it. We actually like it. It just has a lot of ingredients that aren't um, that desirable. So I'm trying to get away from using this brand as much, but I have a lot of it, so I got to use it up first. So a teaspoon of the beef bouillon. And next I'm going to use onion powder and garlic powder. I'm using a half a teaspoon of each of these. There's my garlic powder. And I am going to wipe off my measuring spoon in between these ingredients. I just like to do that. This one does have two ends. This set has two ends. So sometimes I'll just use one end for one ingredient, one end for the other. So that's kind of handy. But I also will sometimes wipe them off. I try to avoid using too many measuring spoons by using things that dispense. But these two uh, seasonings I don't have in dispensers right now because these are the only two I've really ever had problems with them clumping up. And they are clumped up even in these containers. But I think it's because I store them too close to my stove because boiling water and stuff like that, you really shouldn't store your spices in an area where you have a lot of steam regularly. Okay, so a half a teaspoon of onion powder. And then I'm also using some mushroom bouillon, or this is mushroom soup and seasoning base. I'm calling it bouillon. This is going to give it that kind of earthy umami kind of flavor, just a little bit extra. Teaspoon of that. And that's all of my seasonings, really. So I'm going to give this a shake and settle those down a little bit. And then I'm going to go ahead and add my rice. I'm using instant white rice. You could use instant brown rice if you wanted to have something with a little bit more fiber. And I'm using one and a half cups of the rice. There's one cup and a half. Now the difference between the instant white rice and some other rice is that I really only have to bring the water to a boil and then just put a lid on it and let it set and the food is going to be cooked. The rice is going to be cooked. You have to cook things a lot longer if you don't use instant. So if you are in an emergency where you don't have a lot of cooking fuel, you might not want to have to boil things quite so long as you would regular rice. The other thing is a lot of the ingredients I'm using don't need a long cooking time. So if you use a longer cooking ingredient with them, they can sometimes tend to overcook. I'm going to settle this down in here. And now I'm going to add some peas, some freeze dried green peas. I'm adding a cup of the peas. It's starting to get full, but you can see that will settle down in there. And now I only have a couple more ingredients left. I'm going to be adding some freeze dried chopped onion. I'm going to be using an eighth of a cup, which is the same as two tablespoons if you don't happen to have an eighth of a cup measure. And then my final ingredient is going to be some carrots. Now the carrots are actually dehydrated rather than freeze dried because carrots don't really do well freeze drying. They tend to turn white a lot of the time. So commercial companies don't often offer them freeze dried because, you know, they won't, they would get a lot of complaints about them. So I'm using an eighth of a cup of the freeze dried, uh, the dehydrated carrots. And you use such a small amount because um, when food gets dehydrated, it shrivels up and gets a lot smaller. So it's going to swell up a lot more when you're cooking it than the freeze dried ingredients. And the other thing is it develops a very strong flavor. The carrots especially get a very strong, sweet carroty flavor. So 
you don't want to put too many of those. So now this meal is all ready to go. If I was going to be putting this on the shelf for long term, I would add an oxygen absorber into the top of it and seal it up with a lid just like this. And it is all ready to go on the shelf. But I'm going to cook one up for you right now so that you can see how it turns out. And now I'm going to show you how to prepare the hamburger rice oriental into a meal. I'm going to use my Coleman butane stove to do this just like I would if we were in the middle of a power outage or some kind of other emergency situation. I just need a medium saucepan. I'm just going to go ahead and take my jar and open it right up. Empty the contents into the saucepan. Now I'm going to use two and a half cups of water and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the water to rinse out the jar just to make sure we get any bits of sauce mix that might be left in the bottom. Also keep in mind when you do these jar meals that there are graduated um, measurements on the side of the mason jar so you can use this to measure your water especially if you're in a situation where you might not have a lot of dishes to work with. All right you can see there was a good amount of soy sauce powder left and bouillon powder left in the bottom of the jar so that's definitely why you want to do that. I'm just going to add that two and a half cups of water into my pot. Give it a stir to moisten all the ingredients. I don't need to let this set and soak um, for any amount of time before I add the heat like we do with some of our recipes because there's nothing in this recipe that's going to take very long to become tender. So I've got that all mixed well. I'm going to turn on the heat. Medium high heat is good. I'm just going to bring this up to a boil and as soon as it boils I'm going to add the lid. And we're going to turn off the heat and let it set for just about 10 minutes and it's going to be finished. This is a super fast and super easy meal. All right, I'm not sure if you can see it, but this is starting to come up to a boil. So I'm going to go ahead and put the lid on and just turn off the heat. And it's just going to set like this. I'm going to set a timer for 10 minutes. It might need um, 10 or 15, but I'll check it in 10 and I'll be right back. All right, so 10 minutes have passed. Let's see how this is doing. I still see a little bit of water in the bottom of the pan, so we are going to let it set for another five minutes or so. All right, let's see how this is doing now after an extra five minutes. So it's been a total of 15 minutes and it is looking perfect. The liquid is all gone from the bottom of the pot. Let's just give it a taste and make sure that everything has softened up the way we want. Mm. That is perfect. So now this is ready to serve. There it is. A delicious warm dinner. For my next meal, I wanted to feature the pulled pork. Once again, I am going with a rice based dish. I'm calling this one Cuban pork rice bowl. Honestly, I kind of cringe when anyone, including myself, uses cultural names like that in the name of a dish. Please understand, I'm not claiming this to be authentic Cuban food or anything like that. I just thought my recipe needed a little more of a flavorful name. And that was a little bit of the inspiration for this dish. So that's what I went with. Now for the pork and rice bowl, I'm going to be using the same wide mouth quart jar. I've got a clean canning funnel because we're working with a different flavor profile. Let's get started. For this meal, my first ingredient is going to be, of course, the pulled pork. Now you see I have this one in the can rather than a canister. Pulled pork is one of very few ingredients. It might be the only one right now that's available that has a shorter shelf life after it's opened. All of these freeze dried foods have a shelf life of 25 years while they're sealed in the can. Most of them you have about a year to use them up after you open the can. The pulled pork, because of the type of fat that's in it, it needs to be used up a little bit more quickly. At least that's what they say. I've left mine out a lot longer than you're supposed to be able to and it was not rancid, but you're supposed to use this up within a few weeks of opening it rather than a whole year. What some people will do with it is they'll put their opened portion they haven't used into the freezer because that will keep it. I don't really like to do that just because my freezer is always really full and I'm trying to depend a lot less on my freezers because you just can't depend on them. You can't depend on always having electricity. So what I would prefer to do with the rest of mine is to put it into a glass mason jar and seal that up with an oxygen absorber. By doing that immediately after I've opened it, I'm going to have a lot longer shelf life um, with it. 
And the other thing that I can do is I can basically use the whole can and make a whole variety of different jar meals or a lot of one jar meal that use the pulled pork. Use it all up in the jar meals, um, seal it up with an oxygen absorber, and it's going to be fine in those meals for several years. The key to this would be to start working with the pulled pork and get it dealt with um, really quickly after opening it while it's still very fresh. You don't want to wait a week or two and then decide that you're going to do something with it because it's already coming closer to the end of its open shelf life. So that's the way that I deal with the pork anyways. So I haven't put it into a canister because I don't leave it in a canister. I'm going to be putting it into mason jars and sealing them. And then you can see here, this is what we use. Part of the system that we use, we have a program um, an app that we use to keep track of inventory and we're able to put things in and out of our inventory. So when I go to order food for the month, go to order off of a sale, I can compare what's on sale with the amount that we already have in our stockpile. And that's how I decide what I'm going to purchase that month. We're able to scan the QR code to add things to our inventory, subtract things from our inventory. This was the date that it was manufactured. Because like I said, this stuff has a 25 year shelf life. So we bought this back in 2020 and we've had it since 2020. So another really good point with long-term food that you can store for a long term is you can purchase it when the price is lower and you can eat it years later when the price is inevitably going to be higher. This can of pulled pork right now is going to cost a lot more than it did when I bought it in 2020. So I saved some money right there. And a lot of people are using this to store food for their retirement when their income is going to be a lot lower maybe than it is right now. So I'm going to use one cup of the pork a cup of freeze-dried pulled pork and next some instant rice I'm using instant white rice a cup and a half of rice so there's one cup and a half once again I'm gonna set all these ingredients down that allows me to fit more in the jar I have been told to put a silicone mat or a cloth under my jar when I tap it so I should be doing that so when you tap yours try to be a little more careful than I am today Next, I'm going to be adding seasoning. I'm going to start with some chicken bouillon. Once again, use your favorite or use what you have. I'm doing a teaspoon and a half of the chicken bouillon. So a teaspoon and then a half. Keep in mind if you're sensitive to sodium, if you're not allowed to have as much, or if you're just trying to cut down a little bit or you don't like your food very salty, you can cut down on the amounts of all of these seasonings because I don't add any actual salt to this recipe, but the seasonings I use um, all have salt included. Next, I'm going to be using some of this sesson. I'm using the packets today, and I'm going to use one packet, which is one and a quarter teaspoons. So if you like, you can use the bulk in the jar. I think it's a little bit more economical that way. Just measure out a teaspoon and a quarter. But I'm just going to use one of these packets. And next, I'm going to be adding some adobo, and I'm going to be adding a three quarters teaspoon of this. I'm going to be using some freeze dried minced garlic, a teaspoon of this. Next, I'm going to be adding some freeze-dried tomato dices, a half a cup of the tomato dices, a half a cup of black beans. Now, these are instant black beans, kind of like we have instant minute rice that just needs to be soaked in boiling water because it's already been cooked and dehydrated. That's the way these beans are. They've been cooked, they've been dehydrated, so they cook very quickly. Um, much different than actual dried beans that need to soak and cook for a long period of time. So these are great for this type of meals. And just great for emergency prepping in general. So I'm doing a half a cup of the black beans. You can see it's getting pretty full here, but these smaller ingredients will filter down into the spaces between the bulkier ingredients. Next, I'm going to add some mixed bell pepper. Now this is dehydrated, much like the carrots were dehydrated. Um, this There's nothing wrong with freeze-dried bell peppers. This just suited my purpose better. Um, you can get freeze-dried bell peppers, but... Um, freeze dried and dehydrated are, are pretty different so this is what I'm using for this purpose today so I'm using an eighth of a cup of the dehydrated mixed bell peppers and this is equivalent to two tablespoons of course next I'm going to use some green chilies these are freeze dried green chilies these are not spicy at all these are really pretty mild they're very mild um, they just give that chili flavor but they really don't give any heat so if you want this dish to be spicier you could add some freeze dried or dehydrated jalapenos or you could add some cayenne pepper powder or flakes or you could just put some hot sauce on um, when you serve it i'm going to be using a quarter cup of the green chilies and finally a quarter cup of freeze-dried chopped onion all right now our jar is full just like with the other meal if you want to store this for the long term you can add a 200 or 300 cc oxygen absorber and seal it up with the lid that will interact with all the oxygen in the jar so that there won't be any oxygen left. Here is our 
pork and rice bowl, meal in a jar, ready to go. And now I'm gonna show you how to fix up this Cuban pork and rice bowl. And it's gonna be basically the same process that we did with the hamburger beef oriental. So I've got my pot and I've got my jar of food. I'm gonna go ahead and empty it right into my pot. And again, I'm gonna add two and a half cups of water. Make sure everything's kind of evenly submerged under the liquid. And then I'm gonna turn on the heat and get this starting um, to come up to a boil. And then once again, once it boils, we're just gonna have to put the lid on for about, probably go with 15 minutes this time since that's what worked last time. And it'll be ready to eat. All right, you can see this has come up to a boil. I'm just gonna give it one more little stir. Go ahead and turn off the heat. Add the lid and set a timer for 15 minutes. I'll see you back here in a few. All right, so it's been 15 minutes. Let's go ahead and see how this looks. How beautiful is that? Well, that has definitely absorbed all the water. Look at how beautiful that is. Now the real test with a dish like this, because it has the large chunks of pulled pork, is gonna be just to make sure that one of the pieces of pulled pork has become hydrated all the way through, which it definitely has. Look at that. It's amazing. Meats like this is one of the things that usually um, turns people on to freeze dried food in the first place because it's just so amazing what you can get in your food storage. It's just like what you would get fresh. So this dish is now ready to serve. Wow, this smells so good. I really can't decide which of these dishes I like better. They're both so delicious. Now I just wanna show you another way that I do meals like these, and it works perfectly with recipes that use instant rice, like these do. We like to keep emergency meals like these on hand. These are pouches like backpacking meals that you only have to pour boiling water into and let them set a few minutes and you have a meal ready to eat. They're great for grid down situations. They're great for hiking, camping, hunting trips. And what we've been using them for a lot lately is when we travel. We throw a few meals like these in our suitcase and it helps keep us from having to eat out so often. So it saves us some time, it saves us some money, and it helps us eat a little bit healthier too. So I've started adapting some of my meals in a jar into homemade backpacking meals like these by having the recipe and putting them into these Mylar MRE pouches. I get these from Wallaby and I get all my Mylar bags from Wallaby if I can, because they have, they have really good quality bags. A lot of the time online, you don't really know what you're getting. A lot of sellers are really kind of tricky about the way they describe things. You don't always get a good quality bag. Wallaby bags are always good quality. They also include the appropriate size oxygen absorber with all their bags, so they make it easy. It's also the only place I've seen that has MRE bags like this. And I really love these short squat bags with the wide gusset on the bottom because it's really easy to eat out of these. They have a whole variety of sizes though. And some people actually like doing their meals in a jar in Mylar bags instead of jars. Some people that just works better for their needs. So you can do that as well. You could use a quart size bag and do the full jar meal in a Mylar bag. So there's lots of options with these. And now I'm gonna show you really quickly how I put these pouch meals together and how they turn out. So you can have more options for your prepper pantry. So these are the pouches and you can see they open up, but they've got a nice gusseted bottom. And I like to open this up fully and smooth it out before I start making the meal. And that means it can stand up and it's easy to eat out of. So let's go ahead and get started. And now I'm going to put together the pork and rice bowl. I'm starting with half a cup of the pulled pork. I'm using three quarters of a cup of the instant rice. I'm using three quarters of a teaspoon of the sasson and three quarters of a teaspoon of the chicken bouillon. A quarter teaspoon of the adobo and a half a teaspoon of the minced garlic, a quarter cup of the diced tomato, a quarter cup of the black beans, an eighth of a cup of the green chilies, an eighth of a cup of the chopped onion, and one tablespoon of the mixed bell pepper. 
So now this bag is all full. So I'm going to go ahead and seal it. Now, if you were going to store this for longer than a year, you would want to add an oxygen absorber. And you can also, it has a Ziploc here. So I'm going to seal the Ziploc. But you can see that you can also heat seal it. You can see where these notches are on the bag. If you heat seal it above those notches, you're going to have a good seal on it, but you can still rip it using the notches. And then you can go ahead and label it and put it away. But I'm going to fix this one up so that you can see how it turns out and the process for getting it prepared. So I'm going to go ahead and start my electric kettle and boil some water. All right, so I've got my kettle here full of hot water. I'm going to go ahead and open this meal up. I've got a spoon because I'm going to want to stir it after I get the water and just to distribute all the flavors all around so that it's all flavored evenly. Now a cup and a quarter of water is what we want for this. If you make this and you decide that you want more water, you can add more water. If something doesn't get fully refreshed and isn't fully soft and ready to eat, you could add more water. A cup and a quarter has been working for me, but you can always, after it sets, you can add a little more if you need it and adjust your recipe. I'm going to measure out a cup and a quarter. I'm going to go ahead and add the water, then I'm going to stir this around really well, and then I'm going to seal it up, and I'll show you what we're going to do with it after that. Now these instant rice type of meals are perfect for this application because the instant rice really just needs to absorb some boiling water to be fully cooked. So I should have mentioned if you had any really large chunks of pulled pork when you were adding your ingredients, you could break those up into smaller pieces just because they will refresh more quickly if they're in smaller pieces. So I've got that mixed. I'm going to make sure everything is submerged down into the water. Now I'm going to seal this up really good. I take out a lot of the extra air if I can when I'm doing this, but that's probably not necessary. So that's sealed. Now what I like to do with these is to put them into kind of a koozie that keeps the heat in. So we use a lot of really simple insulated lunch boxes. Um, this isn't the type we usually use, just that really simple cheap type that they'll have at Walmart. Um, I usually can get them for 50 cents or a dollar on clearance after back to school season. I just don't have one handy right now, so I have this little baby bottle pouch that hopefully will work. But if we have been like um, at a hotel doing this and we didn't think to bring a, a koozie, we sometimes will wrap it up in a towel from the bathroom, a clean towel. You can just wrap it up. Anything just to keep the heat in is what you want. So I've got this in here. I'm going to zip it up. And I'm going to let this set for 15 to 20 minutes. I'll probably check it in 15 and see if it's ready. And if not, we'll let it go a little bit longer. Okay, it's been 15 minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and open this up and we will see how it looks. And if it needs any more time. Got my same spoon that I stirred it up with to begin with. Wow, look at that. Can you see that? It smells amazing. Wow, wow, wow. I think the big test here is going to be this really big chunk of pulled pork to see if this got refreshed all the way through. And it looks like it did. It feels refreshed all the way through. And that's kind of what I meant. If you had any big pieces like that, you could break them up so to make sure that they would refresh all the way through. But those did everything has just take a little taste to make sure that the beans got all the way soft mm, they did this is perfect imagine how awesome that would be to have in a hotel room or on the top of a mountain if you're hiking or backpacking in a lean-to if you spend the night at your campground there's so many times that meals like this would come in handy and you can make your own homemade so that was only 15 minutes. That's all that really needed and it's perfect. For the hamburger rice oriental pouch, I'm going to start with the hamburg and I'm going to do a half a cup, half a cup of hamburg, three quarters of a cup of the instant rice. There's a half and a quarter, so three quarters. And for my soy sauce powder, I'm going to do an eighth of a cup, which remember is the same as two tablespoons. I'm doing a half a teaspoon of the beef bouillon, a half a teaspoon of the mushroom bouillon, a quarter teaspoon each of the garlic powder and the onion powder, a half a cup of peas, a tablespoon of carrots, and a tablespoon of the chopped onion. 
And now this bag is ready to go. Look at that. Now, if I wanted to store this um, long term on my shelf, if I wanted to store this for longer than six months or a year, I would put an oxygen absorber in this when I close it up. Now, the great thing about using Wallaby bags is that Wallaby um, includes oxygen absorbers with all the bags that they sell of appropriate size for that bag. So these bags came with the oxygen absorbers that I need to seal up meals for long-term storage. This meal I'm gonna prepare for you today so you can see how it comes out. So I'm not gonna add an oxygen absorber. All right, so I've got my boiling water. I'm gonna go ahead and open this pouch up. Now what we want is one and a quarter cups of boiling water. And then after I put the water in, I'm just going to stir it to make sure all the seasonings and flavors get all mixed um, evenly. And then we're going to seal it up and let it set for about 15 minutes. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and pour in this water, boiling water. These pouches are made to withstand boiling water. And I'm going to use my spoon to just give it a mix. Get all those flavors mixed into every part of it. Zip it back up with the zipper the zip lock. So I'm going to stick this inside just to keep the warmth in a little bit better. All right, so I'm going to let this set for about 15 minutes and then we will come back and check on it. I'll see you then. All right, it has been uh, 15 minutes. So let's see how this is looking. Still nice and warm in here. Give it a stir. It looks like it's absorbed all the liquid. It smells really good. We got no more liquid in the bottom. Let's give it a taste and make sure that everything is tender. Nothing's crunchy anymore. Mmm. That is a perfect. There you go. Look at that. That is just perfect. Now this is two decent sized servings. One very hungry person with a big appetite could definitely eat this in one sitting if they were hungry, but it can typically serve two people. So that makes these perfect for us when we're traveling. But if you were hiking or camping or something like that, you might be really hungry and you might be able to just eat it all by yourself. There you have it. That gives you a few more options for your prepper pantry that can also make your busy nights easier. I love it when things can do double duty. Don't forget to check out what's on sale. I'm going to have links for everything I showed or mentioned in this video down in the description box below to make it easy for you. I'll also have printable recipe pages linked down there for you as well. And make sure you join my Meal in a Jar a Facebook group. Join the awesome community of jar meal lovers that we're building over there. If you made it all the way to the end of the video, leave me an emoji to represent which of these two meals you think you'll like best. And check out this video next for another great meal in a jar recipe. I'm Jara with Wicked Prepared, Survive Today, Thrive Tomorrow. We'll see you next time. I feel like chicken tonight. <laughs> I can't do that.